get into the DNA and you can be affected by lead poison and all kinds of stuff years later. But he said that what they're not telling you here is what happened when they dropped the bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki and they went up in there, they said that the people was not as in, as, as in bad shape as they thought they was going to be. Until they had realized that they went down to the doggone lake and seaweed was growing in the lake and the seaweed was purifying everything. So they were saying that the key here is, with the blood pressure now, is to use kelp. You can buy kelp and season it, or you can use the kelp within with tablets. But you can use kelp. But he also concluded what I said. He said that the number, because I said that on my taste, that the number one killer is sleep deprivation and dehydration. And he said it's sleep deprivation, dehydration, and non-exercise. Well, one out of two ain't bad. Fuck that exercise. Oh. <laughs> We're gonna have to get around this another goddamn week. <laughs> I'm back. Damn. I'll walk. Damn. I ain't got a choice because I ain't got no car. Yeah. Tell <laughs> the nigga on the bicycle. <laughs> uh, you see me riding a damn bicycle. You might want well to shoot me. I might like a damn mass murderer on a bicycle. You imagine me on a fucking bicycle? I'm like a damn mass murderer. Fat as I am on a goddamn bicycle. I'll wait on the bus. <laughs> we got a train down here. That's the reason why they got see you all are on reservation. Why they never put a train in this city? Yeah. Somebody said, well, it's the motor city. No, that ain't it. They're trying to destabilize you. That was a that's a design that they never considered a train. If Atlanta got a train, you all got more people than down Atlanta. They got a train. You know what I'm saying? Hell, St. Louis got a little piece of train. <laughs> You ain't got a train in this big ass city. That's by design. But dehydration and sleep deprivation. Now, stick close to me on this because the, when I get into this particular thing on the, on, on the water, water is going to be the key. But it's going to be the key on an alien extraterrestrial type thing. You see what I'm saying? Or uh, 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 what this thing is going to really be about in a few minutes and stuff. But I want to give the stats because they got the stats here again. They were saying that 37 million Africans have AIDS, and another 37 million is going to get AIDS, this, the, uh, this dies from AIDS, and another 37 million is affected by AIDS. You see what I'm saying? You see, close to 40 million black people have died from AIDS on the continent, and they got. And when it's time they tell you 40 million, you always gotta magnify that nine times. That's what they told us in the outreach program. You know, I work for them one day. <laughs> outreach, they say, every time they say AIDS, if they say they got 10 people got AIDS, magnify that nine times. So every time they say that, if they say it's 30 million, you gotta magnify that nine times. Then they give the motherfuckers those condoms. And Dick Gregor said that the, the non option nine in the condoms is what was giving motherfuckers AIDS. Remember, Dale Jones said 10 years ago, well, if I'm going to kill some people with AIDS, I'm going to put it in the condom. That's what Dale Jones said. Now we got Dick Gregory, is that done the report that the spermicide, non oxygen 9, is what's giving the people AIDS. So they said that when they did a, uh, uh, a report, in prostitution, the people who tested positive with AIDS was all given the spermicide non nine on the condoms. Did you get it? And we, I would say that the, the, the Shakti energy and the Kundalini force and the, and the uh, astro body around the penis and the Shakti energy will kill anything. If the vaginal secretions and stuff will kill anything going. Is it the AIDS you, you susceptible to all types of shit. We know they're giving you, they, they're killing you and calling it AIDS, but you're susceptible to any damn thing by using the fucking condom because you're cutting the energy. You see what I'm saying? You're cutting the energy. So, 
The condoms is also one of the keys. And Dale Jones talked about that 10 years ago. Now Dick Gregory is saying that the non-oxanine is what's giving the people the what you call it, the AIDS, uh, 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 in some type of link. Because this AIDS thing is a great mystery. Because, you know, they're killing the Africans and calling it AIDS. You know, they're killing the Africans and calling it AIDS. Now, this is the key right here. Now, this is very important. I went to Houston, Texas a month, a month and a half ago. And the brother who had me to come every year, he goes and works in the sugarcane field. What he does is, is he got a long distance truck. He parks his truck in the field and for six months, he sit up and watch videos. And they knock on the truck and he drives the cane to the factory. He said they got machines that load the truck and everything. And he drives it to the factory, they got machines to take it off. So he don't do nothing but touch nothing but the steering wheel. For six months, he makes some big time money. You know, maybe 60,000 bucks for, for three months, three, four months. Uh, just sitting in a truck. So he said, um, and he was telling me, he said, but they, the sugar cane, he said, the sugar cane, I said, yeah, and I said, so, he said, the sugar cane is this big. Now, has anybody saw real sugar cane? Yes. Now, we know that sugar cane is that big around. He's saying the sugar cane that they harvest is this big around. The same as this pen, that's what the sugar cane is. Which we know sugar cane is about, this, if I was to pull this up, right, right. it's the same, it's in this thing, it's the same size as that, that roll inside of this thing. About that big around, about big as a damn silver dollar my biggest is silver dollar. So he said, it's this big round, so they clone the sugar cane. Now, check it out. He said, not only do they clone it, you can't sell to the mills that process the sugar. You can't sell the regular sugar cane to those mills. They don't buy it. So, if you pull up to the mill with the real shit, they won't buy it. They only buy the one that comes like this, the clone hybrid sugar cane. You see? I'm like, damn, I got sugar cane this small. He said, yeah. He said, they been stop doing the other one. He said, and they won't buy it. He said, not only that, the government has to give you the seeds, here it goes again, to plant that sugar cane. And they don't buy the real sugar cane at all on these mills. I said, that's interesting. I said, okay, then that means that they have altered the sugar cane and the sugar, the hybrid clone sugar has to be the key to everything when it comes to shutting down the fucking melody. Because you go to the juice aisle, what it says, fructose corn syrup. You see what I'm saying? That's the same hybrid sugar. The soda, same hybrid sugar. You see what I'm coming from here? So, apparently, it's in everything. So what they're saying is that they can control the melanin molecule by keeping it dormant through the cloned sugar. Why is this? Because we got to understand the reason why drugs affect us so much is because we're melanin people. And melanin responds to stimulants and altered substances, or, 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 or substances of altered states of consciousness and stimuli and different types of drugs and certain types of foods. Melanin responds to that, okay? Sugar in the ancient world was a potent drug. You see what I'm saying? It was a potent drug. Dr. Charles French said that the Egyptian priest used to take sugar and eat it and go to other levels of consciousness. It's just because sugar is such a part of our diet now, we don't
know, get that, but then again, on the other hand, when us going to new beings, real sugar probably would. You see? So they already studied the melanin, understood that one of the keys, they understood that marijuana makes the melanin levels jump within 13 minutes of smoking marijuana, the melanin levels increase 100%. That's what they talk about in the uh, uh, Russell J. Reader's book and Joe Robinson's book, Melatonin, Your Body's Own Wonder Drug. So, hence why marijuana is illegal. But, sugar to the ancients had to have but been one of those hallucinogenics or one of those drugs that now try to understand this how this goes. When they were making sugar off of a regular sugar cane, because we don't know how long they've been doing this shit. We find out about it 10, 15 years later. I just found out about this. And I was shocked because the last time I ate some sugar cane in South Carolina, my grandfather used to bring that shit and it'd be this big around. So when he told me something like this, I said, hold it, hold it, hold it. Back the fuck up. I don't. I said, maybe, hold on, I know about some damn sugar cane. Yeah. A brother from the islands came up to me in New York when I told the story, and he said, uh, uh, "We, we, that's all we deal with down there, sugar cane." He said, "But it's interesting when I went home recently, what they're planting is this shit right here." Now, what I'm saying is this about the sugar. Let's say we don't know how long. Let's say 15 years ago. The brothers only been working down there for about, I guess, two or three years. So I don't know, we don't know how long they've been doing these things. Let's say about 15 years ago, they had the regular sugar cane. Okay, the regular sugar. And you had 15 years ago, there were certain cells and chakras and centers in your body that were shut down because we hadn't gone through the quickening period that we've gone through now. He said, well, how do we know there's a quickening period? You conscious, ain't you? <laughs> Hell, 15, 20 years ago, you couldn't give this shit away. Nigga might look at you like you're crazy. <laughs> but all of a sudden, around the late 80s and the early 90s, we had a jump in the consciousness. You remember? And so they shut it down in the mid-90s in the mid, 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 mid and put people back to sleep. But you all got on board. So what I'm trying to say here is this. Let's say if you had the real sugar now, which wouldn't have done nothing 15 years ago, but now you'd be going to another level. It would probably be something that would take you on another level and melanin would respond to it. So therefore, they had to clone that and that shit shuts down melanin because it's a shut down product. It's like, you know what I'm saying? And the melanin responds to the low level of what this shit is. So, we now have a link here. Because we, we've been tracking this shit for the last, since, since 98, 99, the number one seller in the black community was 12 packs of soda for 99 cents and a dollar. So, apparently, this is one of the keys to the melanin. It's, it is not just in sodas. That's what they want to do. And they really want to put a bunch of niggas on lockdown. But it's in everything, including the juices. Because I want to know, did the juice aisle get abundant in the 90s? Got that juice aisle as big as the soda aisle. And the shit tastes so good. That's how you know the shit got to be good. They got some Welch and shit in the carton. I be drinking this shit, I be like, God damn. <laughs> Can't shit get any better? <laughs> they got a Welch's peach and damn <laughs> Peach and white grape. I drink that shit, I be like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I can't stop drinking it. I mean, I fucked up the whole cut. And I start drinking it, and I, I'm like, oh shit, and I have to pull more. I'm like, goddamn, shit's so good. So we talk about something that's like crack cocaine. 
the sugar. But then again, on the other hand, now let's go back now. Because we've still been trying to figure this crack shit out. Because we know that the crack, that everybody been saying, and most people, they've been saying, that, oh, when I got hooked, I got hooked the first time. You say, you know what? How many people were on it? It had to get hooked at least the first a second time of using it. But what about if you already had a precursor to the crack in the sugar? Yeah. Yeah. Now you get it? Then you can understand why this shit fuck black people up so much. Why is it? You see, we talked about this before when the brother said he went to McDonald's and ate the fish sandwich and he used to snort cocaine and he says, no, his lip was numb and his nose was draining and he went there to McDonald's fish sandwich and his nose started draining and his lip got drunk, got, uh, and his lip got numb and it was in the black community. So obviously they had a precursor to the cocaine and stuff. You was already hooked on cocaine through the fast food so when you did the crack, it got you hooked the first time. It's a shit, you know. Well, what about the shit with the sugar? And what about if the sugar is a hybrid shit that's manufactured and the shit is like crack cocaine? You understand what we're getting here to today? See, one link leads to the, what's that thing? Just the scientists back here, so. Ramona, Ramona Harris. There you go. Let me tell you something. Spirit always had me doing all kind of crazy shit. <laughs> oh, this goddamn cherry soda. God loves some shit cherry. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> goddamn shit cherry is about a child. Fuck right. this cherry soda. <laughs> Drink this shit out of can. Shit, when the shit goes, I'm like, damn, this shit is good. <laughs> Pour the shit in a glass. And the shit tastes like chemical. Because see, what happened was, it's coming through the little hole, it ain't getting enough oxygen, so it tastes like cherry soda. Pour it in the goddamn can, and the shit tastes like bleach. Pour it in the glass, tastes like bleach. See what I'm saying? But what I'm saying here is this here. What about if the sugar is a form of crack cocaine? And whatever you take in the drug form, you get addicted because you're already addicted. And we know this shit shuts down the melanin molecule. But here goes again when the man talking about these modified foods. These modified foods. I don't know if they got them up here. They got the shit down there. Checkers. They got them checkers down here? Up here? Well, the same big fat motherfucker who started the shit, LeVon Hawkins, is up here, ain't he? That's the motherfucker who started the checkers. In Atlanta. Levan Hawkins. He's up here. Ain't he up here now? Yeah. Inner City Foods. Yeah. He got he went in the Burger King and Pizza Hut. Right? right? Shit. <laughs> they got a shit that checkers down there. You gotta eat. You see, you gotta eat. And they selling burgers. 99 cent all day. It's not a special no more. That's their regular price. <laughs> but if you eat more than two, you come down sick. Because they got additives up in that shit. You see, now this, he started this chain down here. Now the motherfucker up here, what you call What's that? You're high end, I'm just trying to say. Homeboy started them ships and he booked up and he came straight here, right into Atlanta. Now remember, he started to, to DC. Now he started in Atlanta. They got them all over Atlanta selling for a dollar. And you don't realize the CDC is down in Atlanta, Georgia. And most niggas that's successful in business get run out of business. And this motherfucker go on and he done went from Checkers to damn Burger King. And other things here. And now he, where they take him? They take him to the damn third world country now. Detroit. 
You know, if they if they introduce it in Atlanta, it's actually for you motherfuckers up here. Right. What? Inner city foods? You see, this is the way this shit is going down here, you see. This shit is crazy. But remember now, like I told you before, you don't have to get what you call it because on uh, Phil Valentine did a lecture this summer and talked about all the genetically engineered food. What we're trying to tell you is this. All the food is genetically engineered. All the food is cloned now. All of it. All the food. Has anybody ever thought about this? It takes... You can buy a damn bag of fucking buffalo wings. It'd be damn near 50 in a fucking bag. <laughs> but a chicken ain't got but two damn wings. <laughs> I, I don't know. You might just have a wing in his asshole or something. A chicken ain't got but two wings. Now you might, in buffalo wings, you might get four. I will give you, you might get four wings per chicken. Because you get the little drum in, and you get the little wing part. But damn, it'd be a damn, okay, four wings per chicken. You know what I'm saying? If you got a hundred wings, that still means you got to kill 50 chickens? That don't make sense. So that means in one grocery freezer, you might have enough wings to kill Damn near every chicken in one grocery freezer. Not every grocery freezer, and it's all in all the grocery freezers. You gotta have enough chicken in one grocery store to kill every chicken in Michigan. <laughs> so that's telling you that all food, there's no such thing as real food. Real food has probably been gone. You understand what I'm coming from here? It's real, it's been gone. But going back, sugar is in everything. Not even in the sweet shit. 98% of the shit you eat that's salty got sugar in it. You see what I'm saying? All your sauces, everything has the high fructose corn syrup in it. And now you saying it's shutting down the whole central nervous system. Well hell, that's, that's where melanin is in the whole central nervous system. You see? But remember now, like my man said, we mutate now. Because we do have these generic babies. And one thing about them now, they might be raised on Funyuns and Skittles. <laughs> you know, my eye shit was nine liters when I was, that shit hit in 1969. <laughs> Motherfucker remember that shit, you know. You know, you had the M&Ms and they had the red m and They took that out and then they brought the red m and back in 1981. But they had them nine leaders hit round 68. That fucked up a whole generation of motherfuckers, boy. <laughs> but these motherfuckers are raised on Skittles and Funyuns. But despite they being generic babies, they're smarter than anything that I ever did in the fucking sixth grade. You know what I'm saying? I'm amazed. And how genius does, I mean shit that would get you an ass whipping, some fucked up shit. But it's just amazing that they could be so young and can even have the audacity to think of some shit so condescending and facetious <laughs> at fucking two years old. Damn, damn, damn. You know what I'm saying? To be some real facetious and condescending, that bad disposition shit. But you got to be a genius to think about the shit because they be giving it to you. And you didn't have a nigga in, the, in, in, in college that gave you some shit like they do. They be two years old. They be running shit. So apparently there's some kind of mutation. You see what I'm saying? Like my brother. He fucking around. He gonna tell his son, pick the fantasy five. That's five hundred. Well, the fantasy five is a hundred thousand dollars. A five hundred thousand dollars. Pick the fantasy five. This when the boy was down two. So the boy picked the fucking fantasy five. He drew the little numbers the best he could. He said, draw out five numbers. He drew out five numbers the best he could. And, my, and he played the numbers every day. 
And because the boy, the boy picked it up and he sat there and gonna watch the TV. He picked it about 30 minutes before. He watched the damn TV and the shit that the boy picked on the paper came out on the TV. $500,000. He said he sat there and he cried like a damn baby. <laughs> He cried like a damn baby. This boy picked, I think it's $100,000, I think it's what it is. The family survived, $100,000. He tell the boy to pick the family survived. The little boy scribbling shit on the paper, two year old. He look at it, and for some reason, don't go play the number like he does every day. Watch the TV, and the shit falls, and he cries like a goddamn baby. You see what I'm saying? So, it be some ruthless shit these children be doing, but it be some genius shit. I wouldn't have thought about it until high school. Motherfucker doing this shit is two and four. If you notice, I'm just trying to say the caliber of what these, the way they think. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The way they think. You know, they, the mannerisms, they sit there and be chilling, watching TV and shit, <laughs> chilling around you all quiet, you know. So when they get quiet, it's like a grown person shit. Just sitting there all, yeah. like they're 40 years old. Yeah. And <laughs>
But the key here is now going back. What we're saying here also is also mind over matter. Now, the other day, show you how the spirit is working. Now, it's amazing how big and fat I am. I am yet to ever be sick in my life. My mama was that way. She never was sick. I'm not, most I'd ever get was a head cold. But I've never been sick. I went to Indiana one time and the, the sisters, they put me in a the chair. They're going to massage me. And every time somebody tries to massage me, I come down with this utter pain. I can't understand it what it is, but there's only one problem though. My body never aches. Nothing in my limbs never aches. So when a person massages me, obviously they're doing something like they're trying to massage a two-year-old or something. Yeah. So a person as big as I am, I'm never sick. And I'm never hurt. Now my mama the same damn way. You know what I'm saying? Because she, she done let the doctor see she done let them convince her with this high blood pressure and diabetes we're going to get into when we come back. According to this book, Kundalini, Energy of Adepts, you, it, it, it's, it's impossible for you not to have high blood pressure if you're on the spiritual path. But that's an attribute. We talked about this before. We're going deeper into this thing. But I'm never sick. I've never hurt. My bones never, I've never, I don't know about what a bone ache is. I've never had aching bones. So when they started to massage me, it started hurting me. I'm like, you got to stop. Because I ain't never, my, don't, you, don't your shoulders ever feel tired? I said, I ain't never had that before. <laughs> so obviously, I already know what the shit is. It's got something to do with mind over matter. Mm. I, I, my mind, I'm still 19. And ever since then, I've never thought of myself other than being young. So therefore, I know that it's got something to do with psychological, and that's what you got to come to, to, to the aspect. But then again, on the other hand, I ain't worked in the last 10 years either. <laughs> in, in a conventional sense. Yeah. And I have, so, I've never said. Now, that is I am. I've never said. Never said at all. You see what I'm saying? And all, uh, you know, uh, but I, 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 I said, okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I said, I'm going to go on a little diet just to balance out my behavior because I've taken doing nothing to a level of... <laughs> now, I, I said, I don't see... <laughs> I woke up one the other day. I woke up and it was 11 o'clock in the morning. I said, I'm going to go in here and drink this damn liquor to try to get drunk, thinking I can make it till 5 or 6 o'clock. Because I don't like the day I'm in. Okay. And I think if I get to the night, I could kill that day. <laughs> so I, I slept up. But I, I, I think you're doing nothing to another level. So don't feel sorry for me. You know, they get big nose like that, but you don't understand. I, I actually, I, I'm talking about as far as doing nothing, now, I'm not tested this shit. There's a whole bliss of doing nothing. Yeah. Yeah, you finish going? 30 seconds. Man. Okay, yeah, it's a whole bliss of doing nothing. Stop taking this shit to another damn level. So now, we're going to get into the lecture when we come back. Okay, testing. Now, give me some more volume. Is that all the volume you give me? No. Pop it up. For sure. <laughs> Yeah, okay, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay. All right, we're back. Uh, like I said, at this phase in your life, you need to deal with only esoteric aspects of the religion. You've done the other religious thing, which is the book that they give to the masses of the people. Remember now, always deal with the esoteric. So you've heard this time and time again. Esoteric to Christianity is Gnosticism. That's what Christianity was fashioned out of, um, um, Gnosticism. Esoteric to, to Hebrew is Kabbalah. Uh, the esoteric to Islam is Sufism. So you read those other books is nothing but inspirational. Although you can go into those books and find esoteric things, but you can't go by those books, so there's a difference. I don't go by anything in the Bible, but if I open up the Bible, I can see all types of esoteric things up in there. 
because the scriptures was taken from ancient manuscripts out of the Egyptian mystery system and all of the mystery systems around that part of the world. So you need to leave the theology alone and you can use those books as source books because the texts up in there are different than what they are teaching you about those types of things. Like say for instance, you got a, the goddess Astarte, you get the goddess Easter. Astarte is the goddess Oshun, which is this altar is based on. Uh, the goddess Oshun. Um, uh, you get the book of Esther. You know that, you know. Uh, you get the book of Esther. So there's certain things left up in there, but you have to go into it to understand those. There's different, that's a different, a different things in the Torah. Uh, different things in the Torah. There's, so those books, if you go buy those books from A to Z, then you're confused because the simple fact we're talking about what? Dozens of books taken out of the Conference of Nicaea. And we're talking about just uh, Revelation is the oldest book in the damn Bible because it didn't come from the Bible. It comes from the Persian Apocalypse, which is if you get the book of uh, um, Parallel Mythology. Um, his name is um, J. Birolin. J. Birolin, Parallel Mythology, and they have all these apocalypse in there. If you get your Persian apocalypse, they literally just take plagiarized it. So this book predates the Bible by thousands of years, and the Persians got it from the Library of Alexandria. Or when Cambyses raided in from Persia. Persia now, as you know, modern day Iraq, ancient Babylon, and so on, all that's the same thing. But that apocalypse and stuff, the one that the Bible gets, they get it from Persia. So they know that John the Divine and all this old bullshit on some mountain. These are pamphlets that was put together by authors. That's what the book 101 Bible myths. I think that's the name of no, 101 Myths of the Bible by, what's that guy, Green, Greenfield, Green, um, his name is um, Gary Greenberg, Gary Greenberg, 101 Myths of the Bible, as well as his book, The Moses Mystery, by Gary Greenberg, and basically these are edited uh, commentaries by several authors around that area, and you think it's the word of God, what the fuck does that mean? You know, like God is in the writing damn books. He Joan Collins and shit now. You know, these are ancient, now, these are ancient fragments from the mystery systems. Taken out of the mystery school and by the later cults or the later authors put them together for whatever society that they found themselves in. You see what I'm saying? They sign themselves in and stuff. So the Quran is the word of God, but why does it have the Old Testament in the front of the damn thing? You know what I'm saying? So he got this revelation that nobody got, but it's the Old Testament in the front of it. Jesus got this revelation that nobody got, but the Old Testament is in the front of it. All this is edited stuff and all, and the thing about it is we got to grow up and understand the esoteric uh, uh, part of behind these particular things because it has nothing to do with the program that you think in the well this is the way it's supposed to be in the Bible this is the way now we're in the book of Revelation and all and, the, and it's an alchemical text that's talking about your body going through a certain transformation and transmutation the apocalypse is inner alchemical chemical marriage and an alchemical wedding of the rising of the soul you see, so if you're going to deal with anything, deal with that instead of inspiration at this particular time. You know what I'm saying? You're world-class people now. Uh, if you went to the Pope, you couldn't come with him with a fucking Bible. He'd look at you like you're crazy. He'd probably get killed up in the Vatican with that shit. That's, they put out his stuff, the, the, the esoteric teachings behind the papacy. There's a whole book called Theosophia on what the Pope and them deal with. Theosophia by... Um, uh, Arthur vs. Lewis, Arthur vs. Lewis, Theosophia, and they're dealing with the realm of the goddess. They, they say shit. If you motherfuckers up in here right now, trying to get somewhere, and your text doesn't comprise the goddess, <laughs> you are insane. 
the Pope and them know that they don't even try to. They even tell you right there, Mary, Mother of God is the most important thing, even more so than Jesus. Why? Because they study the goddess Sophia, which is the same goddess Oshun. You see what I'm saying? The whole concept is to go back into the court of the goddess, the realm of the goddess. You see what I'm saying? That's the key. You know, the divine feminine. So if you got any male showing this murder cult religion that ain't dealing with the divine feminine, you're wasting your damn time. And you know the sad part about it is, with black people, our lives socially does not even fit that bullshit of a father when we know it's our mama that's every damn thing. She is everything from the mundane to the monumental, from the sublime to the damn nightmare. She's all of that shit. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So the whole thing is the realm of the goddess. That's the mystery. And they book the, the book Theosophia, the hidden dimensions behind Christianity. It's a whole book on what they deal with in the Vatican. But the Pope, the same one that you went around here with a Bible, they don't even know anything to deal with that shit. You know what I'm saying? Because they got all the artifacts of the world up under the Vatican. So they don't deal with that. You the only fool that think that the Pope did. He come and do all that holy water shit to you. He don't study that. The whole teachings on Theosophia by Arthur Verse Lewis. The book is still in print. Gives you all the mysteries and stuff. And it starts off, and they might start off with the whole thing that they give you on the first two or three pages. And as it progresses, it goes into the court of the goddess, the divine Sophia. The divine Sophia. Theosophia. You know what I'm saying? The Pope wouldn't dare call the most God a most high God a damn he. You know what I'm saying? Some things just make common fucking sense. You know what I'm saying? The Pope wouldn't dare. That's why they can go and kill up them fucking Arabs. Why you think them Arabs is fucking dog on mince meat? And they can kill up them Arabs. Them Arabs is on the whole, they're on the whole male show with this thing more than anybody. The whole Allah factor, you know what I'm saying? Which used to be a female goddess. Allah. You know what I'm saying? But these fools here, such woman haters, until they can kill them all up and rightfully so. Shit. You take the white man, the white man ain't dumb. The white man wouldn't roll against you that way. He has to come in secrecy to you and kill you all so he let us be wise and conspire against them. But he opens up war on the Arab worldwide. Why do you think he can do that? He ain't stupid. He knows because these motherfuckers are devoid of the goddess. So they miss me. They open season to kill. And rightfully so. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is a savage. Talk about a damn hate and he, Allah. You know what I'm saying? This is a brute savage. You don't even understand. It's about the divine Sophia. But when you go into the Sufism, get the book on uh, uh, creative, creative, imag creative imagination in Sufism by Henry Corbin, which is the esoteric Islam. It goes into the goddess Sophia. The goddess Sophia. Uh, 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 if you can't find another that, it's, it's, the book is also entitled Alone with the Alone. And it's dealing with the God of Sophia. But the guy who wrote Theosophia to break down with the papacy, he had to use Henry Corbin's book on Sufism, Islam, Sufism, to do that. So get Theosophia. And it goes right into the God of Sophia. The divine feminine. This is the stuff that you need to be dealing with this particular time. You see, um, the, the, divine, the divine feminine. Now the divine feminine is not just a celebration of just the rights of motherhood. The divine feminine is also a, 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 a celebration of the, of, the, of the goddess being totally free. The goddess being totally free. We're going to get into that in a few minutes and stuff like that now. Um, but in so many words, what happens here is the hero takes a journey and he ends up into the court of the, of Mabelglogin, which this is the Moorish science of Mabelglogin. He ends up into the court and he, in, he, he goes into the realm of the divine goddess. Once he enters in the divine goddess, 
He and the land and his whole universe is sovereign under the divine goddess. You see what I'm saying? Now this is Apollo that's coming out of, this is the one from Puerto Rico. And like I said before, one of the reasons why they had to shut this one down because this one has El Cristo Negro. And El Cristo Negro is the crucified black Christ. So they had to shut this down because of that. And also El Cristo Rey is the Lord of the Worlds. Well, it was interesting when I was in Houston, everybody was like El Cristo Rey. And they was like, hmm, I'm like, what, you all know El Cristo Rey? And they was like, yeah. In San, San Antonio, Texas, there's a big statue of El Cristo Rey. And he said people come from all over the world to come to that statue, El Cristo Rey. Which is Armin Ra, Lord of the Worlds. El Cristo Rey and El Cristo Negro is one and the same, different composites of the same figure. You see what I'm saying? Uh, it's, it's one, one and the same. I'm going to explain some of this in a few minutes. Uh, explain some of this in a few minutes. Uh, if you got some legal issues, you call on San Simon. San Simon. This is the most powerful shit right here, this stuff he's dealing with. The other stuff, they've used it so much until the energy is worn out of it. So, uh, uh, if you got legal issues, you call on San Simone. You see what I'm saying? We're gonna go, I'll, I'll go into detailed analysis of that as we get on with the lecture. But the key here is, uh, they got a whole statue of El Cristo Rey in El Paso, Texas. And it's ironic because my father is buried in El Paso, Texas, and my grandfather is buried in El Paso, Texas. What the hell did you end up in El Paso? What? Hey. Some shit. <laughs> so, uh, so, um, but my point here is, if your pantheon does not line up with a certain amount of entities, yes. feminine entities, then you off the mark. Because not dealing with the guys can fuck around and get you killed out here. You see what I'm saying? Uh, you know, now you got, here you got Mama Shola, uh, San, uh, Madre de la Luna, Madre de Agua, uh, and Santissima Muerte. All three of those are composites of the one goddess and the goddess one. It's called the triple goddess. You know, the, the, tri the triple goddess and stuff. So this is the most powerful stuff left on the planet still. Uh, uh, still. The book, this book on Apollo is Apollo Monte. It's, it's more to the day side, but it's still Apollo. Because it's still headed by Zarabanda. Uh, uh, Zarabanda. That's a form of Anubis and Tahuti. Um, uh, Zarabanda. You get the Mama Shola. Uh, in, in your, your boy Sam, Carlos Santana, um, Carlos Santana, in the, in the song Maria, Maria, when all those boys, they, they start talking, the rappers start talking about Mama Shola. That's the goddess of fertility. That's what we hear today, Easter, Astarte, the goddess of fertility. You see what I'm saying? Which is also a form of Oshun, 24 forms of Oshun, 24 forms of Rizuli, and all that. Uh, what's the name knows about this, Paolo, San, Carlos Santana? Um, Carlos Santana got an angel that appeared to him called Metatron. Metatron is a Hebrew angel. Um, uh, it's called a cosmic Christ. This is another form of these same entities. But that's the Hebrew version of it, Metatron. Which means Medu Ra Atan, Metatron. It's an Egyptian Hebrew composite. But it's Metatron is the divine angel. Um, his mate is Metronet. Um, this is the Christ figures. Uh, so Metatron appears to Carlos Santana in 1995 and said, you do what I want you to do, I'll put you back on top. As a result, that album came and stayed on top for like two years. Supernatural. Yeah, that was Carlos Santana saying the um, voice, the Mama Chola, on that song. That was Mama Chola. That's that was Carlos. Carlos. That was That's him, him yeah, singing. He, he, don't even sing on even, he don't even sing on that song. Yeah, That's but the he, only he, thing he, he goes comes in with Mama Chola. That's right. Carlos. Uh, so Metatron came and told him to do, Metatron came to me in 1990, the end of 93, 94, Metatron came to me and all uh, uh, Metatron, Metatron and Melchizedek is one and the same. Melchizedek, but you know, even in the Bible it says, I am of the priest order, Jesus said, I am of the priest order of Melchizedek. Well, your boy tell you that in the book, that Jesus and Melchizedek is one and the same, um, they got Casey. So Melchizedek, Metatron, these, uh, Metatron is the Hebrew thing. That's in the book, The Hebrew Goddess. See what I'm saying? You didn't know that. You around here with a fucking Bible and all this stuff here. You didn't even know the Hebrews got a whole book called The Hebrew Goddess. Raphael Pate's book. 
put them together right there at Wayne State University. <laughs> Who's distributed what they distributed? Wayne State, the Hebrew goddess by Raphael Pate. P A T I. Um, uh, that particular book, Hebrew goddess, and they talk about Metronet, which is the goddess in there, and they talk about Metatron and the sacred marriage between Metatron and Metronet. Well, that's the god that, that's the god Metatron that came to Carlos Santana and told him to do that. I don't know. Metatron came to me and all, you know, and stuff. You can channel, you can channel these entities. Most sisters can tap through and get these particular entities and stuff. Metatron is equivalent to the cosmic Christ also. Uh, in so many words, it would also be a form of your, it would be also a form that's in you, the Metatron. It's a title also. Christ is a title. You see what I'm saying? So, um, uh, he, he, he's talking about that, that whole Apollo thing, uh, that whole Apollo thing in, um, in, the, uh, in his particular tape, um, which is very interesting. Now, let's see where we are now. We've got a lot to cover. Um, being that we just starting the lecture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's see here. Uh, I'm gonna get, get, I was gonna. I don't wanna. I, I still wanna. I'll touch on a few points. Uh, you know, still just warm up. Here is one. Here is one that's real key. Uh, they have a special on Colonel Sanders. You know, on biography. They have a thing on Colonel Sanders, and they talk about his um. A uh, redneck cracker from Kentucky that had to ran a damn gas station, a grease monkey, and all of a sudden he's supposed to put together some chicken with some lemon herbs and spices. You see what I'm saying? And become rich off this shit. And before they started ad ad adding all that MSG to it, in which the, the Colonel Sanders family came and told them that you can't call it Colonel Sanders no more, or uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, because it's not Kentucky Fried Chicken because they was adding all the MSG to it so they just started calling it KFC. But when it was the shit, before, you know, when it's them real lemon herbs and spices, you know damn well ain't no man from no grease monkey dropping transmissions made that. The story is, just like all stories, is Kentucky was a slave state. And the slaves put these recipes together in slavery and their families held on to them recipes and it was in his family based on what slaves or whatever. You know, and he gets to a certain point and that ain't, that didn't fail, and he start putting together that stuff that his family and them had, them recipes that the black people put together, and hence you got lemon herbs and spices. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that kind of thing, and you thinking this old grease monkey did this. But it just shows you how they just steal things like that. You know, how they just steal things like that. But, uh, you know, and it's just interesting that I just want to put that out there. But I'm watching the show, and uh, I'm like, ain't no way in here. And the spirit was like, come on, man, you know better than that. You know damn well what happened. And the story goes on and on with thousands and thousands of things. You know what I'm saying? Even your cell phone technology was put together right there with a guy that went to Clark College down in Atlanta, Georgia. You know, and stuff. And I'm quite sure he probably get a food stamp somewhere or something. Because, you know, damn well he ain't benefiting from this. So they do these types of things and all, you know. They do these types of things uh, over and over again. Okay, uh, let's see here. Um, which is just interesting here because um, I'm going to get into a couple of things here. Um, the first thing is uh, I want to deal with this uh, water situation. Uh, this water situation. Before I do that, I want to, uh, I still want to, um, yeah, I'll deal with that first. Um, the word kidneys comes from the word echidna. That's a, that's a Greek goddess called echidna. You learn more on her, get a book called The Gods of the Greeks by Carl Carini. Let's see if I got something on Carl Carini. Um, Gods of the Greeks, go Carl Carini. Now I'm going to reference this. Um, I'm going to reference this. This came out. Uh, Carl Carini, Gods of the Greeks. Now, uh, this is one that is a must-have. This came out in 2000. This is the dictionary of all ancient deities. They got every deity in the world known that they can find is in this book. From Egyptian, Dogon, Greek, Mesopotamian, Babylonian, 
everything is in this particular book. It is by far, and I got, you know, I got thousands of these books over the years. It is by far the greatest book ever put together with an assembly of deities. It is a must have. $22, you must get this book. This is it's by Patricia Turner and Charles Russell Coulter, C-O-U-L-T-E-R. C-O-U-L-T-E-R. You can find it in the mythology section at Barnes and Nobles or Borders, or you can order it at Amazon.com. I don't know how you get it, but get this book. This is an encyclopedia. This will save you thousands of dollars on tons of books. When you can get this book here, it did such a detailed job. The only ones they don't have is these Apollos. Because they, and I believe they would have put the Apollos in here, the Apollos, if they were available, but we didn't even get nothing on the Western Hemisphere until 1994. And we just getting the ones from out of Cuba in December. They didn't even translate them until August of 2002. Mm. So that's the only one that's not in here. But everything from Voodoo, Europe, Dogon, West Africa, it is the greatest book, and this is the one that you need to get. This is uh, this is uh, the greatest ammunition right here. Now you know I, I got I got a lot, I got an arsenal, and when I'm looking at this thing, I can't put it down. This is the one, the dictionary of all ancient deities. This is the one that you need to get. You see what I'm saying? This one, from everything from the they even revived all of the Chinese and the Japanese and the Asian deities that was lost. So they did their homework. They even revised them. They got the, 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 the stuff from Hawaii. Melanesia. You know, stuff like that. You need all that for correspondence. Because remember, he who knows one book knows none. And the key is in studying, if you reference something that's coming out of tradition on a god and goddess, you only get in a fragment. There's other parts, because it's the same God all of God, it's all over the world. It's just you need to go to the other part and reference it. One good part about it, which I do like about this one more than anything else is, a lot of them will give you the gods and stuff, but they don't compare them to nothing. At the end of each God, each, each, um, in the, at the end of, end of each deity that you look up, they'll say compare with Isis. Yeah. Compare with this one, compare with that one. And that way you can get some type of link of what you're dealing with. You see what I'm saying? And so that's, that's why I highly recommend this one. You see what I'm saying? Even the dark deities. You see what I'm saying? Which is the most powerful. All of that stuff is in here too. So this is the one that you need to get. The dictionary of all ancient deities. That is why... See, I can afford to come up here and curse y'all out. And be raunchy and stuff like that. But, I'm doing, but I do something that most people don't do. I will give you something... That you don't have to depend on me after you leave. That's the good thing about me. If I give you something to read, some book that you access, and give you some stuff, then I have done you a greater service than you having to quote Bobby Hemet when you're trying to learn something. You understand what I'm saying? That takes it out of you being uh, a subservient or you being um, dependent on the, on, the, on the lecturer this puts it back into the people's hands. You see what I'm saying? So if a person gives you bibliography, that's the greatest thing they can do for you. That means your money is well spent. That means you don't need Bobby Hemet after you walk out this door. You see what I'm saying? You can go and access stuff, and if you feel that the stuff is not right for you, or you, you feel that you don't want to believe in it, you have the option to weigh it whether I'm telling the truth or not. Based on you got the information I give you, that's the best thing a person can give you is when they give you bibliography. You see what I'm saying? So that's why I can come up here and be uncouth. Because I'm doing the right thing by you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm doing the right thing by you. So I, I can be uncouth like that. You know, that's the way she is. And that's what we, that's, 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 that's the real scholarship. You see, I can come up here with a long, white flowing gown, and I can make you feel good right then. You can think you've been blessed by the hand of God and all that kind of thing here. And I can give you a show. You see what I'm saying? But this is when you know you're dealing with some stuff, when you can get this type of material. This is what this shit is about. It's about being a damn student and not following Bobby Hemet. You see what I'm saying? So this is the, this is, this, I've been 
seen this since 2000. Another sister got it, and I said, let me see that. I opened it up, and I was like, oh, shit, this thing here is the bomb. So I went and stole it from the damn stove. <laughs> I went and stole it from the damn stove. Now, I suggest y'all don't do that. Because I know it was some power. If you're a centimeter off and you ain't tapped in, you fuck my out of me. Calling somebody from the jail. <laughs> now I'm dealing with some spiritual energy, so I'm hooked up. Cause the damn beeper went off. Oh, you know, big wrestling, you know, they gonna put the sense in this. The damn beeper went off. I said, God damn, I'm gonna shoot, I know damn well. <laughs> I know damn well you ain't got me up in these white people, so get ready to go to jail. <laughs> this shit was funny as hell. The damn beeper went off. I started walking fast. <laughs> Now you know I ain't got no motherfucking car. <laughs> <laughs> then I started spitting. <laughs> and I looked up, and the bus was right beside me. I said, oh shit. But what had happened was, I noticed when, when, the, when the beeper went off, I, I could barely hear it. I, I, was, I said, did I hear a beeper? But I wasn't sure. 